In this episode, I am speaking with Susan Mulkey, National Recruiting Director in the Interim Resources Division at Stephen Douglas. I met Susan at an Encore Palm Beach County virtual event. Susan's focus is on hiring for interim positions across the country and industries. I want to reintroduce to you the concept of working as an interim employee for three to six months. Cue the music. Welcome to the Repurpose Your Career podcast, brought to you by Career Pivot. This podcast is where those of us in the second half of life come together to discuss how to repurpose our careers for the 21st century. Come listen to career experts give you proven strategies. Listen to people like you tell their stories on how they repurpose their careers. And finally, get your questions answered. Your host, Mark Miller, has made six career pivots over the last 30 years. He understands this is not about jumping out of the frying pan into a fire, but rather to create a plan where you make clear, actionable steps or pivots to a better future career. Are you ready to repurpose your career? Welcome to episode 294 of the Repurpose Your Career podcast. My name is Mark Miller, and I'll be your host every Monday for discussion on what it's like to repurpose your career. In this episode, I am speaking with Susan Mulkey, National Recruiting Director in the Interim Resources Division at Stephen Douglas. I met Susan at an Encore Palm Beach County virtual event. Susan's focus is on hiring for interim positions across the country and industries. I want to reintroduce to you the concept of working as an interim employee for three to six months. I have twice before done episodes on this topic. Episode 221, Fractional and Interim Leadership Roles with Mike Harris of Patina Solutions, and Episodes 228, Discovering the On-Demand Executive Talent Marketplace with Matt Blumberg. This is yet a different spin, but from a national recruiting firm. Let me read from Susan Mulkey's bio from her webpage on the Stephen Douglas website. Susan Mulkey is a National Recruiting Director in the Interim Resources Division at Stephen Douglas, bringing over 20 years of experience in talent acquisition, human resources, and human capital strategy. Susan has worked on both the agency and the client side of the business, hiring thousands of people in her practice. She is industry fluid with successful placements across a multitude of industries, including advertising, marketing, and media, software and technology, consulting, retail, supply chain and logistics, fintech, and higher education. Susan is recognized for her passion in transforming cultures, optimizing total talent, and building effective systems and practices. She is known as a trusted partner and key contributor to those she has worked with on recruiting solutions. Susan has a national network to tap into, assisting with her far reach and ability to place more specialized candidates, and both locally and remotely. She prioritizes delivering key business resources for her clients while ensuring the best fit for her candidates to create a positive impact for all involved. Susan is very involved in philanthropy and contributes her time to organizations such as Encore Palm Beach County, which connects people age 50 plus to jobs and opportunities, Mission United Way as a career coach for veterans, and donating to the Salvation Army and the Susan G. Cohen Foundation. However, before we get to the episode, let's have a word from our sponsor, Career Pivot, the Career Pivot membership community is a group of people from all over the U.S. and Canada with diverse backgrounds. This community where everyone is there to help everyone else out to figure out what they want to do in the second half of life and then make it happen. Many have made changes that they did not know existed or was possible when they came to the community. They learned from each other and broadened their horizons on what was really possible. Let's hear what Alec had to say about being part of the community. Well, you can't underestimate the value of community, right? To start this transition in my life and to be able to connect with others 
who were going through it, who had maybe perhaps made the same missteps that I had made, right? Or to the extent to which I could learn from them and not make certain mistakes or share my experience. It really just was a very giving place for me to share information, laugh about the highs and lows and and, sh- and get information from other people who were interested in my story as much as I was interested in, in hearing about theirs. I'm recruiting new members. If you are interested in learning more about the endeavor, please go to careerpivot.com slash community. Now on to my discussion with Susan Mulkey. Welcome to the Repurpose Your Career podcast. I have the real joy of having Susan Mulkey on the podcast, and she is National Recruiting Director of Interim Resources at Stephen Douglas. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Well, we met because uh, Susan presented at a Encore Career kind of update for Palm Beach County. Something yes. like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, national, nationally for me, but um, yes. yeah, Palm Beach, Encore serves Palm Beach County. That's correct. And and she talked about what she was seeing with older workers coming back into the workplace. So I thought, and, and she does a lot of interim placements, which I That's thought correct. would be real interesting. So Susan, number one, what is Stephen Douglas? So Stephen Douglas is a national uh, staffing firm and executive placement agency. And we are, we really, we're industry agnostic, um, but we have, you know, different teams that specialize in different areas, focus areas. Uh, For instance, the interim or the project division, which is where I sit, uh, we really heavily focus on uh, senior level human resources, as well as finance and accounting professionals um, across the country. So, you know, if a company is looking for an interim CFO or uh, an interim CEO, anything like that, the, the company itself can do that while they're looking for a full-time person, or maybe they just have a project like right now, uh, tax and, you know, closing out the books. There's a, a, a big need for that. Define for me, what is a typical interim position? Sure. So, I mean, listen, a typical interim position can be, again, what I'm seeing from, at least from my team, um, mostly accounting type positions, CPAs, we get a lot of call for that. And it could go anywhere from, you know, I I generally don't see anything less than three months. Um, What I'm seeing on average is about three to six months, and then sometimes even a lot longer. You know, we've got we've got long term contracts, people out working for a year, sometimes year and a half. What kind of companies are looking for interim hires? All kinds. As I mentioned earlier, we're, we're totally industry agnostic. So we're working with any kind of company that you can imagine. We're working with school boards, uh, so higher education, regular school. We're working with banks. We're working with other, uh, you know, accounting type firms. Uh, we're working with software companies. We're working with, you know, manufacturing, um, food processing, you know, retail, hospitality, name it. We're we're literally all over. Whoever needs that person at that time. So how does the, okay, this is a three, six month project. How does that work? Who do they actually go work for? How do they get hired? Sure. What's the process? So the process is um, we have, obviously, you know, we've got a whole uh, roster of clients that we work with. Um, And then of course we get new clients. Um, And like any other company, we do business development efforts to try to look for those clients that might have the needs. Uh, Stephen Douglas is a little bit unique because um, other than just the project work, you asked me earlier, what else do we do? We also do contingency placements. Um, we do uh, retained types of placements for, for, for bigger executives. Um, we do temp, like true temp roles, more or contract roles on the uh, technical side. So that's a huge piece of our business. So we, the way that we're set up, at least on the project side, is we've got market directors, those market directors are all over the country. And what their primary job is, is yes, they do business development, but they're also doing customer management, customer relations. Um, And while I am the national recruitment director, I support all of those market directors. And my job is then to go out and find the talent that they need uh, to fill those types of roles. So 
like any other, you know, any other talent acquisition company, you know, we use the regular, we reach out social media, LinkedIn's a real big one, obviously. Um, we have a huge, huge network and we, we network to each other in, in-house because if we have a need, you know, I'll call one of my, maybe my perm people and say, Hey, do you have anybody who's interested in contract? And they they'll send them to me. Um, and then of course, like I said, I go out and I get the talent. Um, I screen them for, you know, Stephen Douglas. And then if they're, if they're a good fit for that, we'll put them in front of the, the client and they'll do a quick interview and hopefully we'll get them to work. I think the big difference here is these are fairly high paying jobs, Yes, but they're short term. So the, the threshold to hire is much lower. Yeah. And if you're talking about hiring on a full-time basis or like yeah. attempt to perm type of scenario, uh, we, Stephen Douglas does that. My team does not. My team only does project people that actually want to do project or interim work. And we typically see that a lot with our mature workforce because they might, you know, maybe they're just, they want to travel more. Maybe they just want more flexibility. Um, you know, perhaps they're, they've retired and they, you know, they want something to do. I see a lot of boredom. Um, you know, they might want to just work six months out of the year and the rest of the six months, they might want to travel. We get a lot of people like that. Um, and so they are higher level jobs. These are senior level folks that we're placing. Um, they should be able to, you know, essentially just kind of hit the ground running, but we want those people to reemploy them. We will reemploy them each time or redeploy them, I should say. So when we know that their project is coming to an end, um, we, we get to work to get them into their next project if they're interested in doing that. Um, so we don't really want them to go full time, quite frankly, but it does happen. It absolutely happens. We just we just did a conversion uh, this week for for a really great client, and they loved they loved the person, and they just fell in love with each other, and they made an offer, and, and so we allowed that to happen. So, but other teams do that as well. I kind of call this as dating dating to get a job. Yeah, kind of kind of feels that way. Sure, right. But you're, I want, I want going... a long term date. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> and, and, and and maybe you just want to move in together, but we, yeah. we won't go there. <laughs> but right. um, so who do who do these people actually work for? Who pays them? So they are actually um, also something very unique about uh, Stephen Douglas. They they get paid by Stephen Douglas as a W two employee. Uh, we do not do ten ninety nine, and we do corp to corp, but it's rare. Um, we we'd much prefer to make them a W two, and the reason being. Um, again, is because we want to redeploy you over and over again. So we want to keep you busy. But the other thing is that we offer um, full-time benefits packages to all of our associates uh, that we put out on engagements. So um, they actually get the same exact benefits package that I get, you know, medical, dental, vision, 401k with a match, short-term, long-term disabilities, so forth and so on. Um, So they actually are on our payroll and they're paid by Stephen Douglas. And what happens when they're on the bench between between engagements? We try to find them. Like I said, we market them um, very, very heavily, and we market them internally as well as externally. We've got over 150 recruiters at Stephen Douglas um, that have needs constantly all the time. So it's actually more frantic in-house, it feels, sometimes than, than outside uh, of Stephen Douglas because there's so much activity happening, uh, moving candidates around and, and sharing really great talent with other uh, market directors. Um, and if they're, if they're, you know, gone too, too long, and let's say they were, you know, they had benefits or what have you, they can enroll in Cobra, but typically speaking, we get them out to work pretty fast if they, if they want. Okay. And is most of this on premise work or is, is remote or how is, how has the pandemic changed the world? The pandemic has changed the same that it's changed everybody. Um, it really depends. I think a majority, a, a vast majority of our roles are remote um, or at least hybrid where they might want the person, for instance, they, they want an accountant uh, to come in and help close out books. They might have the person come in for maybe a couple of days in the beginning of, a, of a, an assignment. And then at the very end of that engagement, maybe to, to hand it off and maybe they found a full-time person or just needed to close out the work. Um, so we see some hybrid. We we still get a fair amount of uh, companies that want somebody on site, but those are usually for positions um, really high level, as in you know uh, maybe a CFO who needs to oversee a team for a little while. Um, they might want somebody there to to keep that 
presence up and in the engagements, um, sometimes the recruiters because they still want to recruit on site. Um, but the, we see a lot of hybrid for those as well. And are there for the on site positions, are there particular geographies that are more that you're, you're seeing more of the on site jobs? Um, personally, so far, personally, I'm seeing a lot more on site for Texas. I'm seeing a lot of on site for Georgia. Um, some in Chicago, but that that's all I've seen so far. That doesn't mean, you know, that other, other territories aren't asking for that or that other divisions clients aren't asking for that. But mostly, um, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm national and most of the clients are fine with, you know, especially on a, on a contract, if you will, they're okay with remote people mostly. Yeah. It, one of the things, the changes I'm seeing is like I, I've been having discussions with a former client of mine who had been in environmental engineering. She wasn't an environmental engineer, but she was, and she found a job in Chicago and this company had fairly good sized company had posted a job and they couldn't find anybody in Chicago. A lot so of folks after don't want to go back to work. Um, we actually get calls for those people that are leaving because I, I, we get a, a good fair amount of that too. You know, why are you looking to leave? And anybody that I interview, why are you looking to leave? Well, they want me to come in and I don't want to come in. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stay remote or I like my flexibility. I like to be able to move to a different state if I want, you know? Um, so we do see that. Yeah. It's as I was saying, I was talking to this former client and they were, they were looking for something fairly specific, an environment, someone who had who had environmental engineering experience, but was a marketer. Huh, okay. And they were going, oh, we can't find that in Chicago. And after after about three months, they finally said, uh, I guess we'll look remote. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You gotta you gotta have a bigger a bigger, wider cast of net. You know. And so that's why I think this type of interim work will become more and more attractive as you can work for anybody anywhere within reason, obviously. Exactly. And here's the other beautiful thing, Mark, is that Stephen Douglas, and I, and I always tell this to people, um, candidates and, and clients alike, at the exempt level, which most of these people are, if they were in a full-time uh, permanent type scenario, uh, we're exempt. We don't get to see overtime. When you work for Stephen Douglas at the high level, you are paid hourly. You get time and a half, anything over 40. Um, but the beauty is, is that we don't pass on that premium. We don't pass on a, a, an overtime premium to the clients because we don't want them to worry about it. If they have a need and they have a true need and they really need to get you know, this work done in a certain time period, and it's going to require you know, some overtime hours, we don't want them to say, no, we can't have you work over 40. Um, we absorb that as a company and we pay our people because we also want them to feel comfortable and confident doing the work um, that we've placed them there to do. So that's another, another really nice thing. When, when have we ever been paid by the hour? I think we always joke around about that and said, if we did, we probably could have retired a long time ago. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. How do you handle recording of billable hours? Because obviously if I walk, if I walk in the office, not every hour can is going to be billable. How do you handle that? That's a little bit of a more in-depth question. One I, I cannot answer 100 percent because I think we're a little bit more flexible than other agencies. We have because we're privately held. Um, you know, we we are allowed to negotiate and and work out a contract that's going to make sense for both the client and Stephen Douglas. So it could be. It could be more of an SOW type of thing, a statement of work where we're going to pay you a certain amount of money for a certain time. Um, it certainly, again, we prefer to kind of pay by the hour because, you know, we want to make sure that our people are being paid fairly and equitably. Um, you know, and we also do, like I said, we do retain, we do contingency. So we have a, a kind of a broad array of uh, different choices that we can certainly make with our clients. We work with them. Yeah, I mean, the one advantage of doing um, pay by the hour is obviously I, I I've been a consultant before and we all know about scope creep, mm -hmm. uh, right? As projects grow, well, if it's a fixed price contract, then you get hard feelings, and and if it's just strictly by the hour, it, it certainly makes things a lot less complicated. Exactly, exactly. But we, like I said, we we will work with clients. 
And so if what does a typical hire for you look like um, as far as age demographics, male, female? It's hard to say uh, because okay. I don't ask people what their ages are, right? And I don't even actually even see, um, you know, I don't even see applications. So I don't even know how old they are yeah. unless I see them and look at them and, and, and be able to, you know, just from my viewpoint. Um, I work with probably equal amounts of men and women. Um, and my geography, as I said, I am literally national. So I'm all, I'm in every state, any, any need, anytime, anywhere. I'm not... I think it depends on the time of year. I think it would be easier to answer that way, right? So right now, and I know I keep saying that, you know, accounting, I'm using that because that's a huge ask right now. Uh, Internal auditors, SOX auditors, uh, IT auditors, um, recruiters. Recruiters is a big, big ask right now. And I think that's for everybody. We're all having problems with recruiters or finding recruiters rather. Um, But definitely accounting and finance, being able to close out books for the year, getting ready for budgets and things for next year. Um, so my typical hire are pretty standard type job descriptions. Also, where we might differ and where, where we actually add a lot of value to the client is because we're working with seasoned and tenured professionals, they have a lot more skills to offer um, than just doing you know the heavy lifting or the tactical part of the job. However, our, that's what our clients want, right? So they might say, hey, it might be a lower level position for them. Could be like a, I don't know, an accounts payable manager. Okay. And they'll say, our accounts payable manager is going to be going out on an extended medical leave. Can you please, you know, give us a, a somebody to come in? But we want to make make them a manager at the manager level or director level or even a you know, like a, a high level CPA or something, because we really want to, you know, we really want to knock this one out of the park while while our person is gone. And so they realize what, you know, they're, they're going to be paying for a little bit of a a heavy, heavier talent. And then the heavier talent does, does not consult, but they do the heavy lifting. How does one find you and find, find the jobs where, where should they be looking if someone was interested in engaging with uh, uh, Stephen Douglas? Sure. So um, anybody can find me on LinkedIn and that's actually the best place to find me is on LinkedIn. Um, connect with me, message me, also connect with Stephen Douglas. And the reason being, as I say, we we actually post all of our, most of our positions on LinkedIn. Every recruiter uses LinkedIn. And I would say, reach out, send a resume if you're interested. Um, what I do is I, I talk to everybody, whether I have a need or not, because you know what, in 10 minutes from now, I might get a call for exactly that person. And that happens often, <laughs> actually a lot more often than people would think. And so they could just submit the resume. Um, If they see a job that they like, they can certainly call me, you know, question me about it. And I can, I can put them in the right hands. So I'm looking at your, the Stephen Douglas uh, jobs page right now on LinkedIn. How do I know, how can I differentiate between a job job and an interim job? It'll say um, all of the interim jobs typically will say interim or project work, it'll say that on there. And I usually put the, the duration. Um, so you'll absolutely know that. And if it's a full-time search, they will also put that. If it's a retained search, they usually label it that way. We also put out that we're, if we get exclusives, because we want people to know, you know, uh, we're not going to waste your time, you know, by competing with 10 other agencies. It's just us, you know, definitely give us a call. So would it be best that they reach out to you first before applying it to a job or should they just go ahead and apply to the job and then reach out to you? Either way, either way. They can certainly call me if they have questions. Um, and like I said, I'm happy to talk to anybody at any time about their future and, and, and how we can help them. Well, I'm going to encourage everyone who's, who's interested in not working necessarily full time. Cause I, this, I see a lot of people, I live in a, big community with lots of, of expats and a lot of people put it bluntly fail at retirement. I'll likely be one of those people. <laughs> and so they go, and I, and I've got a couple of people in my online community who are there because they retired and then they go, what do I do now? Exactly. I have a lot of that. And there's no question that like, I have no intention. I'm 66. I have no intention of retiring classically retiring because 
I meet cool people like you. <laughs> um, and, and just simply doing this podcast and doing other things that it keeps people mentally engaged. It's, it's fun. And more importantly, you're helping people. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we will put, but we'll put the links to everything in the, uh, in the show notes. Great. And Susan, thank you very much for being on the repurpose your career podcast. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And if anybody needs, you know, just any type of career advice or any type of direction, I'm, I'm certainly happy to have those conversations as well. I want to encourage you to reach out to Susan if this is in any way sounding interesting. Take a moment, go out to careerpivot.com and sign up for the weekly Career Pivot Insights newsletter, which is sent out every Sunday. You will get a weekly update on this podcast, white papers, and new blog posts. And I've just published my latest white paper, Ageism, the Last Acceptable Bias. While there, do not forget to check out the Career Pivot community, which can be found at careerpivot.com slash community. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Look for Career Pivot on Facebook and LinkedIn. You'll find me on Twitter at Career Pivot. Thank you for listening all the way to the end of the Repurpose Your Career podcast. You will find all the show notes at careerpivot.com slash episode 294. You can also subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcast Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Podbeam, Overcast, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, and lots of other places where podcasts can be found. This podcast can be found on the Repurpose Your Career podcast channel on YouTube. Hope to see you next Monday for another episode of Repurpose Your Career podcast.